Hello and welcome to another episode of the Startup Operator Roundup. I'm Roshan Karyapa and I'm Gunjan Saha and we'll be breaking down the biggest headlines from the Indian startup ecosystem. Now, Roshan, last week do you know why the chicken crossed the road? Uh probably to exchange the 2000 rupee note, right? Oh, seems like a very smart chicken. <laughs> cluck cluck. <laughs> well, uh but of course we'll be talking more about this uh, note ban later. In this week's episode of the Startup Operator Roundup, we'll be talking about how Kerala Startup Mission got ranked the world's top public business incubator by UBI Global, which is the world's premier innovation intelligence company. The Indian government has also announced plans to ease the angel tax norms for startups that are raising funds, and of course, the government has been in talks with Tesla, pushing them to start investing in India already. So stay tuned as we discuss these and more. uh now roshan in our last round up you know we saw that everything is just ai 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 but with the developments from the past 7 days things be like more rules 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 <laughs> yeah i mean you could say that uh, there were plenty of new rules that were introduced a lot of hue and cry on twitter social media elsewhere i think the first most important thing was the introduction of a 20% uh, tax collected at source for international payments right on credit cards and so on uh, there was uh, again a lot of uh, brouhaha about this So let's say you're traveling abroad and you use your credit card for food or travel or whatever else you could have to pay I mean 20% more on that so if you spent about 5 lakhs or uh, something like a lakh maybe on a lakh you have to pay 20000 and of 5 lakhs you have to pay a lakh more that's some quick math but uh, there was a lot of outrage that you know this will adversely affect travel it will adversely affect uh, people who are going abroad to study and so on and so forth and even on the startup front right i mean if you are traveling on work and you end up using your credit card or your employer's credit card uh, for a bunch of these expenses maybe an uber or whatever else you know you you might have to pay 20% more right now this tax collected at source is obviously redeemable uh, up to a certain limit uh, you will get it back in a year or so but it's just another uh, compliance headache and it's just one more thing that you have to uh, take care of right there is uh, still a little bit of back and forth on that and uh, hopefully the government will be forthcoming with some clarifications with respect to that and then as we joked in the introduction uh, 2000 rupee notes uh, are soon going to go away uh, right uh, the rbi has said that you have about 4 months up till september 30th uh, to really exchange these notes or deposit them in the banks uh, available now this is not as bad as uh, demonetization i mean you don't have 4 hours <laughs> after the prime minister's speech to <laughs> do that you still have 4 months right i think you know these notes were introduced post demon uh, in 2016 and uh, really it was so that people can exchange large sums of money while the notes were still getting printed and it was in short supply uh, and it was an eventuality that at some point of time they will call time of day on this uh, there plenty of rationale for this uh, more or less that those holding cash tend to do so in uh, 2000 rupee notes right uh then over 60% of the fake currency recovered has been of uh, this denomination as you would logically expect so you have uh, uh up to a 2000 20000 rupee limit uh, yeah, per day, per day uh, per no questions asked to exchange these i mean this is one of those things that uh, had to happen and uh, has happened right now uh, i know it will be a little bit of an inconvenience for people but uh, i haven't seen a 2000 rupee note in a while uh, i don't know have you no <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, as well researching about this i came across the fact that 89% of all the 2000 rupee notes in circulation were printed in 2016 Yeah. Right, and it was. I mean, it was decided back then itself that sixteen or seventeen. I think majority of the notes, right? Uh, yeah. And these notes comprise less than ten percent of what is in circulation at this point of time. Yeah. Yeah. Then there was another rule from SEBI on what they called abnormal gains, right? So if you had any so-called abnormal gains on your uh, portfolio, on your stocks and whatnot. you might have to give a justification to sebi on you know how these gains were made i suppose you know this is to sort of come down hard on front running insider trading and so on and so forth guessing that it will affect people who are perhaps transacting in crores some institutional investors large investors and so on i don't think that uh, you know i have to probably explain my 30% uh, <laughs> increase or 40% increase on any of the stocks that i hold right but yeah plenty of these rules and uh, you know tax and compliance is irritating frustrating in any corner of the world uh, that's just how it is right and um, you know often times as an individual as a citizen we really crib about why these rules apply to us right but the people who pass these laws and rules i mean their perspective is so much wider 
right? I mean, they have to think about so many different things. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't have a right to protest. Obviously, you know, uh, there's plenty of protest on the TCS and on the SEBI rules and whatnot. So let's see uh, how it goes. Uh, hopefully, there is better communication from the government. That is one thing that the government has lacked, right? I mean, a proper explanation of some of these things. And maybe there they could pro possibly hire one or two of our famous uh, influencers and uh, <laughs> get them to explain things, right? Uh, but on the bright side, uh, Japan seems to want to join the UPI network, uh, right? I mean, there is uh, their chief digital officer equivalent of their country who, is, uh, who has made some similar comments, right? Again, this will bolster better cooperation, better trade between both these countries, yeah. Awesome. So, like, seems like a lot. A lot, right? I mean, sometimes, uh, yeah, exactly. So many of these things. Uh, but yeah, let's get on with the, what's happening in the startup ecosystem. All right. So um, to move away from talking about this whole funding winter and shortage of funds, right, let's try and focus on some of the more positive news from the ecosystem. Uh, the Kerala startup mission or the KSUM has been ranked as the world's top public business incubator by UBI Global by the latest world benchmark study of business incubators and accelerators. KSUM is the state nodal government agency that supports the startup ecosystem in the state. They have got a virtual incubation thing called Fail Fast or Succeed, FFS, uh, which is all about testing your ideas, learning from your mistakes. Plus, they've got a physical incubation uh, support for startups for different stages and a funding system that gives out cash from when you think of your idea all the way to when you're speeding up to market. And I think in the past also, we have discussed so many times the government being proactive not only the central but the state governments being proactive to support yeah. the ecosystem yeah. and here we are getting validation from you know premier research institutions yeah for sure see government supporting startups is an absolute no-brainer for me right if you look at any forward-thinking governments with respect to technology and innovation uh, whether it's israel whether it's china uh, maybe the us as well right they all have some funds allocated for this because there is an outsized impact, right? I mean, you don't know which of those, uh, you know, 100 or 1,000 startups that you fund is going to become the next Tesla or the next SpaceX or the next whatever, right? Um, uh, KSUM has been doing a fantastic job. Uh, in fact, incidentally, I spoke on, uh, at their forum about a couple of years back on marketing during the times of COVID and so on. Um, and good, man. I mean, students definitely have to be encouraged to think outside of the box, uh, to think about, you know, solving larger problems, uh, right? Because uh, those solutions are going to come up uh, from these quarters, right? I mean, the hardest problems have to be democratized to a wider set of people, uh, uh, you know, who can and kind of solve these things yeah okay india is also planning to ease angel tax norms for startups raising funds now this angel tax has been like a very uh, dicey area for a lot Donny of investors issue. and um, founders right according to this like angel tax is basically an early stage st startup would have some valuation but if they're raising funds above that valuation that delta will be ta uh, is categorized as income and is accordingly taxed yeah. Now, because of this reason, a lot of, from an investing standpoint, ki, hey, why should I invest, right? So, lo as you mentioned, a thorny issue, but right now, the Indian government is introducing new tax laws that exempt startups from paying tax on this excess amount. It of definitely eases the burden on startups and in in incentivizes angel investors to provide more capital. Plus, it also simplifies compliance and enhances global competitiveness. And... I think this is a, it's a great step in the right direction for startups in India. No, this, is, uh, this was uh, a very thorny issue maybe a couple of years back. And since then, the government has made a few changes to sort of uh, mitigate uh, some of the problems that uh, uh, were involved, right? I mean, uh, the basic point about this whole angel tax is that uh, investors end up paying on a notional value, right? Because, you know, after your round or whatever, the next round that comes in, I mean, if your... Uh, investment is suddenly valued at, you know, 4x or 5x or whatever else, you might end up paying tax on that, right? Uh, and oftentimes, in, you know, investors may not exit until, you know, around or two afterwards, right? I mean, and there's that whole, there's that, uh, there's that whole uncertainty attached to that. But yeah, the government has uh, rightly sort of set things right. So we've seen particularly over the last couple of years how, uh, you know, startup investing has become sort of mainstream, uh, right? There are platforms uh, like, you know, AngelList, uh, Indian Angel Network, Let's Venture and so on and so forth that allows retail investors to pool in their money and invest in new and interesting innovative startups, right? So yeah, this, this just uh, is a positive move to that end, yeah. 
Or right, very soon we might start seeing Tesla cars uh, mm-hmm. on Indian roads. I mean, and Tesla did have plans to enter India. Right, I think two years back, and all these memes were doing the round of self-driving cars, especially in Bangalore roads. <laughs> but again, those plans were put on hold because of high import tariffs and you know lack of local production. But India is really trying to position itself as a great choice for Tesla when it comes to supply chain and sales on, on a global level. Uh, Tesla executives even had a meeting with some government officials who were encouraging them to invest in India. And instead of seeking con- concessions on import duty, Tesla has been advised to check out India's production-linked incentive scheme for green vehicles and battery technologies. Fantastic news. I mean, uh, this is just the news of the week for me, right? Uh, see, when Tesla wanted to sell cars in India, uh, right, they were rightly told at that time that we will not reduce any import tax and duty and stuff. Uh, there was something like a 40 to 100 percent uh, tax depending on the car model and whatnot, right? And there was a lot of hue and cry on Twitter that, hey, I mean, Tesla cars uh, should be made available here, especially their electric and all of those things. And, uh, you know, the government basically at that time said, no, nothing doing, right? I mean, there are no concessions for one brand. We will have to make concessions for everyone else, right? Uh, And what the government said was very clear that, hey, I mean, if you want to sell cars here, don't just treat us as a market. You know, why don't you come set up your uh, manufacturing here, give us jobs, uh, improve the know-how, build an ecosystem, and then you can sell those cars, right? Um, And which is what has resulted uh, in what you're seeing last week, right? I mean, Tesla at that time, maybe a couple of years back, you know, things were a little icy. Um, You know, Elon himself had said that he was working out issues with the government and whatnot, right? And that the, he had complained about the import taxes and whatnot. But uh, this is how you have to negotiate, you know. We are a large market, but we don't want to give away our market for free, right? I mean, we don't want to do that uh, as well. We need to extract something in return. And this is how you sort of negotiate on your own terms. And particularly post-COVID, right? Given that, you know, a lot of these companies are diversifying, they're getting away from, you know, their existing supply chains, Uh, away from uh, China, right? Uh, It makes all the more sense that we play the leverage up. Uh, Tesla has one factory in uh, Shanghai, which is producing, I think, 22,000 cars every week. Uh, It has uh, recently, last year or something, they opened one factory in Berlin, which uh, is supposed to produce about 5 lakh cars a year, right? So they are looking at other places. I mean, they're, uh, they're also looking at Mexico, and so on. So India would be perfect for them. I mean, we've just seen Foxconn as well uh, consider uh, a plant here, right? I mean, outside of Bangalore. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, is a great example of how we should negotiate on our own terms. Uh, And well, if all goes well, I mean, uh, you know, we might see some Teslas on the road. Yeah. All right. So moving on, let's talk about some notable fundraisers from last week. Sustainability platform StepChange has raised $4 million from BNEX and Global Founders Capital. And we also published the episode um, this week. Do let us know how you like the episode in the comment section. Staffing startup InstaWork raised uh, $60 million. And this is a company that uses AI to help people find jobs uh, to fill in shifts. And, you know, there's a whole debate on going on in the media that AI is going to take away jobs. And here there's AI trying to help people find jobs. Yeah. I thought, I mean, we won't get through this episode, uh, you know, we will probably get through this episode without saying AI about a couple of <laughs> dozen times, but as is the case. <laughs> right. Uh, then there's also Bounce, which is set to close its latest series e-funding round of $20 million with uh, participation from existing investor, which is Sequoia Capital India and others. Then Router, which is a gaming and esports content platform, has raised $16 million in a growth round, which was led by Lightbox. And Westbridge Capital Management has picked up a $236 million stake in Indian billionaire Jay Chaudhary's cloud security company, Zscaler. Awesome. This investment makes Zscaler the second largest listed SaaS company in Westbridge Investments portfolio. A lot of good uh, growth size uh, checks coming in, yeah. right? 230 million, 60 million, even 20 million and yeah, so the on. Check sizes have... Kind yeah, of they're up. starting to increase. Yeah, Ankit and Siddhant uh, were on the podcast recently. Uh, I hope you liked the episode. Uh, very smart folks, uh, you know, operating in this whole sustainability um, space. And I think the early companies being built out in this space are so important, right? Because they will teach us a lot about, you know, what kind of business models work, uh, what are the challenges, what are the nuances of operating in the space and so on. So I think this money is going to be very, very well utilized. 
Um, and, you know, we've had uh, Vivekanand of Bounce on the podcast earlier as well, um, solving a very, very relevant problem of last mile mobility. I mean, in cities like Bangalore, that can be a huge hassle. Uh, and they're solving it um, through EV bikes, right? So, yeah, kudos uh, to them. All around, I think, very positive, very good, good stuff. So last week at the launch event of Amitabh Khan's uh, book uh, titled Made in India, uh, Chairman of Tata, Mr. N. Chandra Shekharan, lays out how India is best positioned globally to benefit from the three mega trends of digitalization, energy transition and supply chain security. And uh, here is a quick snippet of the video which uh, Rajiv Mantri uh, tweeted. First, there is no country in the world which has demonstrated a large-scale digital intervention and digital platform for public services delivery which is transformative at scale. Most other people, whatever be the country you take, their energy transition to renewable or new energy, what have you, has to be substitution. Shutting down what is working and then... But whereas in India, the needs of growth that we have between now and 2047 or 2050 is at least three times more than what we have. And all of this will be new energy. And we will do renewables, we will, we will do wind, we will do solar, we will do SMR, we will do 10 other technologies. And that is a unique opportunity because with growth you can fix anything. Priority should be growth, growth, growth. And when you do something for growth, you are not so much under stress like when you do it for substitution. I never use any other example of saying that we are replacing somebody. We are not replacing anyone. We have an opportunity to create a global alternative supply chain base, which I call it as India Plus because India can't do it alone. But just the sheer size, scale, and everything else that we have positions India to be the lead in this alternative supply chain. Somebody else cannot take the lead. It is, has to be India, and India is taking that lead, and the supply chain will get built. Yeah, I thought it was very, very well summarized, uh, talking about India's strengths and, you know, how we are uniquely positioned, right? Um, yeah, Mr. N. Chandrasekharan is a stalwart. Uh, and the vantage point that he has, right, running those large behemoth businesses, uh, you know, I mean, he sees India at a very different uh, perspective compared to, uh, you know, what you and I see, right? I mean, he has a lot more uh, uh, data points to compare and contrast and whatnot. And this was, you know, amazing, very optimistic uh, from him. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, we keep talking about long India on this uh, series. Uh, that's my friend Harsh Susan's framing. Um, this is as long India as long India can be, right? Um, so, yeah. All right, Roshan, so to wrap up uh, this week's roundup, can you tell us about some of the conversations you have lined up? I had a couple of very interesting conversations last week. Uh, one with uh, Sairam, who is early Freshworks and right now is head of marketing at Atomic Work. Uh, and this is a SaaS marketing primer. We talked about how SaaS and marketing has evolved over the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, and uh, doing this whole zero to one, you know, what does it take from a growth perspective? Uh, very interesting chat and that will be published, uh, uh, you know, sometime this week. Uh, other than that, there are a few more interesting podcasts coming up. Um, obviously, you will get to know them on our social media. We will publish, uh, you know, some snippets or promos and so on. Uh, do keep your eye out for all of this stuff. And if you like the content we produce, don't forget to follow, subscribe rate, review, all of the good stuff. We are at about 144 something ratings on Spotify. We'd love to get to a 200 maybe in a month. Uh, please make that happen. <laughs> all right, folks. And also, if you would like startup operator updates delivered straight into your WhatsApp inbox, you'll also find a WhatsApp link. You can click on that to subscribe. And yeah, please let us know how you're doing. What are the things we can improve through the comment section below? And yes, of course, share this episode with your friends and people who think will like our content. Until then, we'll be on the lookout for more exciting news from India's startup ecosystem and break that down for you in the next roundup.